Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from J&H Aerospace. This is the build video for the 2022 Science Olympiad Right Stuff Legal Stinger. This is our advanced Right Stuff airplane. This is for Division C Right Stuff. The airplane features carbon spars and uh, carbon wing posts, uh, carbon spars on the tail as well. So it builds out very light, a very nice, highly efficient airplane. And so now we're going to show you how to build it. All right, so you're going to need some tools to assemble your rubber-powered airplane. Uh, the first is, this is parchment paper. You're going to use this as a work surface, a non-stick work surface for your build. We'll talk about adhesives. Uh, Super 77 by 3M. We have this on our website. This is what the ideal and best material to use to attach your covering to the airplane. Um, you're going to want some sort of super glue um, and not store bought typical super glue in the little bitty tubes. Uh, this is Gorilla brand super glue in a bottle. You want a bottle. The stuff that comes in the little tubes is impossible to use for this task. Uh, we carry uh, Gorilla glue, but we also carry uh, Bob Smith glue, a variety of Bob Smith glues on our website. I recommend the medium uh, viscosity glue. Um, this is this Gorilla glue is the uh, is medium, and then there's a Bob Smith medium that works as well. Um, this is CA accelerator. You use it to make your uh, your adhesive harden more quickly. Your super glue. Uh, and this is also Bob Smith brand, and we carry it. You'll need some sort of petroleum jelly or Vaseline to attach the covering to the covering frame so that you can reposition it as you're adjusting your covering. Um, a few tools that I recommend having, uh, a set of wire cutters like these, and needle nose pliers, and a single edge razor blade. Um, for the senior flyer, this razor blade works well to cut the covering, but for the stinger, you'll want, um, if possible, a cautery like this one. IndoorFFsupply.com in, uh, has uh, this um, device. It's a, um, it is an electric cautery, so if I press this uh, button, eventually that ends up red hot. I don't know if that shows up how uh, glowing red that is, but it's kind of warm at the moment. And I'm going to let off of it so before I burn out my battery. You will want a Sharpie. Um, Sharpie is useful for covering this black area that you get a 10% bonus for, so you better have it. And very important, especially for rubber power, you absolutely must have a milligram scale. So I have, I have modified mine. We have uh, milligram scales on our website. So the thing that I have done to modify mine is I've mounted a piece of tubing here that lets me put a platform right here to put my rubber bands on to weigh them. You can also make a little piece like this with some foam. And that permits you to stick your airplane in here like this. Now notice my propeller is touching. Now I'm over there. So put it on the edge of a table or something. You can actually make this an elevated platform as well. Um, I just use a small one because it pops into the box. You will want a winder. This is the winder that we sell on our website. It's a 20 to 1 winder. This is a torque meter. I highly recommend this. Uh, to be successful at rubber power, you need a torque meter. This is the one that we sell. It twists around, has a little uh, needle, indicates what your torque setting is. And then lastly, I recommend having a ruler, preferably a metric one, so you can easily measure your airplane to make sure it's within limits. Uh, one area where you're going to use that is in cutting down your propeller to size for the airplane. Let's open your Stinger kit and let's look at all the parts that are inside so you make sure that you have everything you need. So there's going to be 
uh, the usual information packet, um, particularly a three view drawing, dimensioned three view of the airplane. Uh, however, more importantly, there's going to be a set of plans uh, for the airplane. This is what you're going to build the airplane off of, and these plans will, um, you'll cut certain parts off to build separately. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that inside the plans is a bunch of carbon fiber. So you're going to have two thick, relatively short pieces. This is 50,000th carbon. Then you will have, let's see if I can get them all. You have some medium thickness pieces. I've got one skinny one stuck in here. So you have five of these. These are your wing spars. So since your kit builds two airplanes, two sets of wing spars, and then the uh, fifth one is for your um, wing posts. And then you'll have this thin carbon. And on the thin carbon, there will be two long pieces and two shorter ones. Do not lose the carbon because you cannot go down to the local store and buy more of it. Uh, and that is true of most of the components in this kit. You'll have two of these roughly 10 inch propellers, so you will have to trim these down for the airplane to be legal. There's going to be a packet of covering material for your airplane. Rubber uh, for power, obviously. Uh, ballast weight. And then, before we get into the balsa parts, this bag is your hardware, so there are some very small components here, and you want to be very careful that you don't lose them. So I'm going to try to drop all of these out. I would suggest, actually, if at all possible, don't do what I'm doing uh, when you're inspecting. Just see if you can inspect without opening the bag, and only take things out as they are needed. There are two propeller shafts. There is a piece of this orange tubing. This is uh, 80,000th polyamide tubing. There is a piece of spider wire. There are two nose bearings. Um, I only have three here, but your actual kit will include eight of these little dental rubber bands. And then you're going to have these ring-looking things here. So these are nylon washers. You're going to use them as O-rings on your plane. Probably a few more than these, but these are Teflon washers. Next. We've got some balsa parts. So this, these quarter inch square sticks are for your covering frame. These are 18 inches long and these are about 8 inches long. You're going to have uh, two fuselages. You will have a set of ribs uh, and various other uh, parts on this sheet. And then lastly, we're going to have wing tips. Okay, so let's get started by taking, well, uh, set the carbon back aside, and we're going to open this set of plans. Now, the set of plans I have here 
are raw, there are no notes on them. Your set of plans will have lots of notes on them. The part that you need to be aware of for the time being is we're going to snip off this part back here that is for your horizontal tail. We're going to just snip straight down like this. snip on this other end to get this wing pattern. Now, there are a couple aspects of this airplane that are really quite critical, so I'm just going to show you so you know. Uh, everything listed on your plans is going to be in inches. I'll do this the other way so it kind of shows up better on camera. So, 45 centimeters is over here, so we're a little bit, we're well short of that. Our wing cord limit is nine centimeters and well we're well under that our stab cord limit is 6.5 centimeters we're well under that and we're allowed 28 centimeters on the stab right there and we're well under that now our stab span and our wing span are going to grow because we're going to put tip plates on our stab we're going to put tip plates on our wings so that's going to make them slightly larger for the time being let's go ahead and we'll set that pattern aside we're going to take packing tape now We're going to lay it down on this set of plans, and this you have to do very carefully so that it doesn't wrinkle. And it doesn't, the tape does not have to go over the middle section, it just needs to cover the leading and the trailing edge. Now the next thing that we are going to do, start breaking off a little bit of tape. And I'm going to tape down the corners of this set of plans directly to the table. just like that. Next, find one of those wing spars, so those are the thicker carbon rods, and let's set the tape aside for a second, and we're going to just verify that it is the same length as what's shown on this template, just like that. Now, let's break off another piece of tape. Cut a little strip off here. We're going to tape this down. Now you want your piece of tape to be kind of here, somewhere like that, not over a rib. Same thing over at the other end. Just like that. And may want to have one in the middle.
You're only concerned about taping it right here. If you leave it kind of loose out there, you'll be able to get it up easier when you're done. Find another wing spar and just set it down. Next, we're going to take the uh, rib set here. And I need to locate my razor blade. There we go. And we're going to take out one set of wing ribs. And now we're going to just gently work ribs apart here. Remove any of the flashing on the end zone. Now we're going to take CA glue we're going to glue that on the end. Do the same thing on the other end. Guy's not wanting to stay perfectly in place. So we're just going to tape it down. Now we'll do the exact same thing over at the other end. I made a mistake here. Remember I said you don't want to tape this over anything that's marked on the plan. So at this point, we're going to go over here to our little gussets. We're going to break out four of them. We're gluing along those edges. We're going to drop this in here just like that. And that's a reinforcement so that our wing uh, wingtip doesn't break as easily. There we go.
And we're gonna need a little more tape because those aren't staying down. Okay, now at this point, just to be on the safe side, so now you should be able to go around and if you haven't tacked that tape down too hard wait, no. okay never mind that's tape that I have on the paper And there's your completed wing frame. Alright, so for your stab, you're going to do the same thing again. It's literally exact same um, setup, except we're doing it with uh, slightly different materials. So, we've got our pattern here. Tape it down on the ends. Now one thing to remember, don't throw your patterns away. Because you'll need them later. Alright, so there's our pattern laying down mostly well. Now take your O20 rod. The, it's the thin stuff and you're gonna mark it off according to the plans so you can snip it so we have two of these again that are exactly per the length shown on the plans I saved those little strips of tape from my wing and I'm just going to reuse them because I can. Now 
Now you have two sets of stab ribs here. So we're going to break out one of those. Now these ribs are slightly curved, but only very slightly. The curve needs to be in this direction, not underneath. Now, go to your wingtip sheet at this time. All right, so take your wingtip sheet here and you're gonna find that the gussets for the stab are in it. And you just do exactly the same thing again. The reason you wanna use these thinner gussets is because your spars are much thinner and the thicker gussets would stick up and um, disrupt the airflow, make it difficult to cover, etc. And there's a little burr on this one.
Alright, so now. Alright, so take um, your plans, lay them out. We're concerned about this diagram for your wing mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same rod that you were using for your wing spars. We're going to snip it exactly to size per the plans. And both of them are exactly the same, so use the first one as a pattern for the second one. Now you can tape these in place or however you like, but what's important is we're going to take another piece of packing tape. I'm going to lay it right there. this one in place. Now on your part sheet you've got this little small strip right here. We're going to break it out. Now, take this part, which is your wing saddle, pop it out, and you've got these two little pieces over here. And we're going to put glue in this little slot right here. And you'll notice there's a, a side of this with a tiny little notch right here. That part goes through like that. Just like that. Pause real quick. This way. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna peel tape off of here. And now this is going to glue down into those little grooves on these tabs. So it's gonna go flush with the bottom. So all you have to do is put glue along there. like that. There we go. 
these components here form your covering frame. So these long sticks are 18 inches long, and if you look at one of your wings, it's not a whole lot shorter than that, so you don't have a lot of room to play with. You're going to want to glue these shorter sticks to the ends. It's very important that you do that. And get this as square as you can. Again, little tricks like this you can use to make sure everything's squared up. because my piece of parchment paper is not quite big enough. Alright, so this is what your covering frame is going to look like. Alright, so take your petroleum jelly and we're going to use a paper towel so that we can rub petroleum jelly on this and put it on fairly thickly. I usually have a, a lot of excess. Now, with this done, your um, frame is slimy on one side, so you're going to want to set this aside in such a way that it's not going to get that all over anything. Alright, so let's get our uh, covering out. And you should make sure you have as clean of hands as possible for this step. Now this covering is fairly fragile, so if you do it wrong, you're going to tear it and then you're going to be out covering the material. So just take your time unfolding the covering. Now, you will note that the covering is sticking to itself. So this is the point where instead of trying to spread it out the rest of the way, we're going to take the covering and I caught some of something down there, I don't know what, but we are going to wad it up into a little ball.
There we go. Check and make sure. Is that wide enough? Yes, it is. And here we go. And then we're going to run a razor blade carefully across here. You can see it's tending to tear the film, so be real careful. And then this bit you can fold up and you can set aside for building a second airplane. So this should be stuck down fairly well. Got a spot that is sticking to the table. So now I get to retension the film here. And there we have film ready for covering. Okay, so we've got our uh, wing and stab frame, and we have the 3M Super 77. You'll notice we're outdoors. This stuff you use outside, you don't use it inside, because it sticks to everything. Now I'm going to set one of my flying surfaces down. And we want to spray, so if the wind is coming from that direction, we want to spray so that the film, the uh, spray is going to go back on the frame. So we're going to spray along the spars. We want to make sure we get a heavy coat on the spars and the tip ribs. And by heavy coat, I mean you can just see a, a little bit of a film on there. You don't want to just completely lather it up because that's useless weight. And then we'll just squirt a little on each of the intermediary ribs. And we're going to stick this up against a surface like that so it doesn't stick because if it falls over it's going to get stuck. Same with the stab, the spars, tip ribs. And then light squirting on the intermediate ribs and you're good to go. 
All right, so we have our surfaces together here, and I, I actually just laid them down like this. Uh, they are extremely sticky, and so you need to watch out there. Um, and obviously the curved side, the adhesive side, is facing up. I'm going to take my covering here. We're going to carefully lower this down, and we don't have a whole lot of space uh, leeway either side. So we want to be real careful about that. And you're going to lay this down in one smooth motion. You don't lift it back up. So that's the thing, is you want to make sure it's exactly right as you're lowering it, because you don't get a second try. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tacking down at key locations. So if you notice, I'm just tapping my finger down. It's very important, obviously, that you have no glue on your fingers. And I'm taking a very, very light touch. Now that I've got it all tacked down, I can start going around the perimeter and across the ribs and actually pressing down just enough to get the covering to stick. So notice I'm not pressing down enough to bend the ribs, just enough to bring the film fully into contact with them. Do the same thing with the horizontal stab. Now, for spars that are this thin, I find it's usually easier to lift up, flip inverted. I do have a couple of spots that aren't sticking down real well. We'll deal with that in a minute. And now, I'm going to take the cautery because, as you've seen, uh, this film does not cut real uh, smoothly with a razor blade. So it's much easier to use your cautery for this task. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the uh, ends here. And so I don't have to go directly up against the structure. I'm out a little ways from it. And we can let the film actually shrink back against our flying surfaces here just like this. Now I'm not making a straight cut across here, I'm actually going to come in a little bit from where it's cut on the tip, and that way it still has a little tab there that holds it in place. And see I left the same thing at that end. This one, I'm going to cut all the way off. Same thing here, here, and here. I need to find something. And so now there's my horizontal stab free. And any excess you can kind of wrap around the edges. Now onto the wing.
Doing the same thing with the wing that I did with the stab where I'm leaving little tabs. Since the film is under a little bit of tension, that allows me to keep the wing immobilized for the time being. So that makes it easier to get good straight cuts. There's our completed wing and step. So we have our wing down on some parchment paper to shield um, it for, uh, the table from getting glue on it. We're going to break out uh, wing and stab tips. So I need two of the wing tips, those are the larger pieces. And then I need two of the smaller ones, which are for my stab. So we'll set the stab tips aside for now. So for the wing tips, we want to make sure that we had covering cleared away from here. If not, I would brush um, the uh, cautery along here to take away any excess covering off the edge because we don't want any, um, we don't want our glue going down on covering, we want it going down on carbon and wood. So I'm going to lay sharpie down to kind of hold that down. We're going to put our wing tip in place. Hold it straight up and down with something that's straight. And now's when I realize I need something else to dip covering out or dip accelerator out with. Don't get um, get as little accelerator on your covering as possible because it does tend. Uh, to dissolve the um, adhesive that we use, the 3M77 adhesive. Alright, so that's that weak wing tip taken care of. Now we want to make sure we keep things facing the same direction with our wing tips here. Before I do that, I guess I have to put glue on it. I left too much excess covering right here. So that gives us our wing with a wing tip straight up and down. So we stay within the span limit. Don't get CA glue on your covering. It's bad juju. And there we go. Now 
repeat the same procedure with our horizontal stab. I've got a little covering that I didn't pull around. All right, so we now have our wingtips on. Take one of your tail booms, so this is the, the really thick carbon. Lay it down. We're gonna glue this guy on the end just like this. And it is very important that you have that um, lined up good and straight or you're going to end up with a rudder offset and then you're going to have to be doing a whole bunch of bending on your rudder. Um, and since you've got two of them, that does make things a little more interesting to keep track of. But, there we are. There's our tail. Alright, you have a couple of options here that you're going to want to think about. So we have a complete um, wing assembly. It's not the wing is not the fuselage is not outfitted, but it's attached to the wing for now. And we have a complete tail assembly. Now, depending on the size of box that you are able to transport your airplane in, you need to decide whether or not you need a removable tail on your airplane. If not, we're going to you would weigh this fuselage down, lay your tail boom on here, and just find stuff that you can jack the back of your tail up with to make sure that it's parallel with this notch. I'll find one more item to hold it up with. And you can glue it on like that. Now, ideally, if you're going for left turns, you'll want one side higher than the other. So if you're going for left turns, you'll want this side jacked up higher than this one. And it's going to take a little trial and error to make sure that this tail boom is parallel to that platform. And then you can dab glue on there, and you're good to go. That's not what we're going to do, though. We're going to show you how to do a removable tail. do the removable tail, we're going to open up our baggie and get out this piece of polyamide tubing and we're going to cut it in half. Put half, one half back, the other half we're going to glue on here and we want it parallel in this direction. So if I glue this on here what I can do then 
is hold this down to the table and press this down. Now what's going to happen is now it's going to be off to the side. That's okay. All I'm concerned is that this motor stick is parallel in this plane and that the tubing is pressed up against the fuselage. Now before proceeding further, we're going to put some CA accelerator on here so that that is locked in. Now the problem is that at the moment this can still break off easily. So we're going to make it so that it is basically the last thing on the airplane that could possibly break off by taking our spider wire and we'll put a dab of glue here. And we're going to just do about three or four wraps on here. We're going to harden this up with our CA glue. Trim off the excess. And there it is. Now, your thought is going to be, hey, okay, so I've got my tail boom. I can slide it in here. Let me explain to you why you can't. It's not going to stay because this is a larger diameter than this. And we supply this this way for a reason. One is this is a standardized size, but the other is this is hard. It has no give to it, so getting a friction fit in there is actually quite difficult to get it reliably. So. The solution is to come over here to your wing sheet or your wingtip sheet and cut a little strip of wood off. Now the accuracy of this strip is not particularly critical, but we've got a strip of wood here. We're going to take that strip of wood and we're going to glue it onto our tail boom. And it can stick out over the end a little bit, that's okay. And now, we have to harden this with CA Accelerator because we do not want any risk of it getting stuck in that boom. Now, if I pinch the end of this, and I'm squeezing pretty hard, I can get it to let me slide in here. Now in this case, this piece is actually a little bit loose. So what I'm gonna do is I could put another piece of wood on there to do that, um, or I can rub in a little bit of CA here. And then I'm gonna harden this CA as well. And now, so this gives us very firm adjustments, and then we can slide it apart for storage. Um, if this ever loosens up, you can repeat that CAing process and, and tighten it back up. But this lets you get uh, very consistent results there. So we're going to take the piece of O20 wire in your kit, and you're going to press it in. And notice I'm kind of rolling this in my fingers. And pressing in at an angle right here so I'm not sticking it up here or back here I'm sticking it right here at this apex and coming in at about this angle is about uh, 45 degrees that I'm coming in at and we want to press it in that's that far into the wood now where you punched it in there grip some glue on it Squirt a little bit more glue there. And now we're going to come out, this is about uh, three quarters of an inch 
We're going to snip off the excess. So this is the rear hook. Now we need a nose bearing at the front. So we're going to take this nose bearing out. This part right here, the little Y bend, it's called a pigtail. That's at the back. This part that kind of angles down, that's the front. This is the top. This is the part that you're going to glue to your motor stick, and you're going to glue it in this orientation. So I'm going to flip this over and glue it in place. You'll notice it's wandering around. That's okay because now I'm going to take a propeller shaft. I'm going to slide this propeller shaft the straight end through the front and out the back. And now, bring this up. I'm going to bend it so that it's angled this direction relative to the motor stick. And it's just a slight angle. And that allows us to develop our left turn. Remove the propeller shaft. Now take your spider wire binding thread. Next, get a propeller. And before we even go about installing the propeller, let's take a metric ruler and, oops, sorry. The propeller diameter is allowed to be up to 24 centimeters. And this propeller is actually slightly under that, which is a little surprising. Nope, is it? It is right at 24 centimeters. Now, assuming it wasn't, you would take 24 divided by 2, which is 12 centimeters, center the hole right here, the hole in that propeller shaft on the end of the ruler, mark where 12 centimeters is and you would do that on both sides and snip the tip of the propeller off. Since this propeller is not oversized, that's not an issue. Uh, however, on my prototype, the propeller was slightly oversized and you can see I have snipped off the tips of the propeller. I've also knocked my nose weight off of the airplane. Now, you're going to think, let's go ahead and slide the propeller shaft on, but there's one step that we need to accomplish before that. Those little tiny Teflon washers, the little bitty white ones, get out at least two of them. 
set them carefully down. I usually like to use two or three. And now we're going to stick our propeller shaft in here. Nope, those aren't going on that way. So, slide them on. And they're on my propeller shaft. Now we're going to take this propeller shaft and slide it. This one's fitting a little tight. I think the end of the propeller shaft is bent ever so slightly. Nope, it just fits tight in there. Okay. We want to make sure that it's long enough that the back end, or back here, will clear the back of this Y. Now take that last little bit that's sticking out there, grab onto it with needle nose pliers, pull the propeller back, and we're going to press with our thumb right next to this. So don't press back here and expect it to bend and not get a bent propeller shaft. We're just going to press it around like that so I get a perfect 90 degree bend. And now this should slide down and engage the little ramp. If I turn it this way, if I turn it the other way, it's not going to engage anything. Now, next, we're going to take our propeller shaft, put the hook in here, and it should slide in. Now, the first time that, that you slide this uh, propeller assembly in here, it may fit a little tight. The bearing has to loosen up a little bit as you rub it around. So rotating it around a little bit will usually let you make it past each progressive bend. Now, getting into this slot right here can be a little challenging. So if I line up that bend right there, that may make it in and it may not. In my case, it's still a little tight. So what I'm doing is I'm going to slide this corner of my hook. I'm going to slide it right there and then rotate around. And it's still being a little stubborn. We're going to work it in there. Just like that. And then you should, with time, be able to pop it back out. Just like that. Now, at this time, we can assemble the airplane. assembled. Now one thing I suggest you do, don't forget to do this, this gives you your bonus, is go ahead and cover one of your rib bays, or color one of your rib bays. And the rules do dictate it has to be black. I would also suggest, if you're going to have more than one airplane, which you should, write the number on the wing, on the tail, and on the fuselage, and on the propeller. And that way in your notes you'll know which one's which. Alright, so we're going to take some rubber strip here, and I recommend taking 
um, enough to make about a 12 inch loop and this this is to get started once you are familiar you'll be able to um, meter out the length of the rubber a little uh, more easily All right, so this is 1.78 grams. So we're gonna need to snip some off, but there is a catch, and the catch is the weight of your O-rings in Scioli rules is included in the weight of the rubber motor. So for a lot of contest classes, that's not the case, but including the O-rings simplifies uh, check-in process for your planes. Go on there. There we go. So I'm going to slip these on. And now I'm going to start snipping rubber off. I'm still at 1.7, 1.67. I need to get access to a little more here. 1 1.6, 1.53, and we'll snip just a small amount off. 1.52. one point four nine six all right so that's about where you want to be right in the one point four uh, one point four nine range is where you need to be now on contest day you are in fact going to need to compare motors and whatnot to verify now the next thing that you're going to want to do is lubricate the end of this rubber motor very slightly, just a tiny amount. Now, if you have a pair of hemostats, which is medical um, pliers, basically, needle nose pliers, uh, that lock, you can use them to hold this knot in place. If not, you need to maneuver it in your hand and put a tiny dab of glue on this knot. And there you go. Now, at this point, you can lubricate the rubber motor. Now, your rubber motor is ready to go. Now, I have used uh, Molly Coat 55 uh, as my lubricant. You need to use a silicon based lubricant, it cannot contain oils uh, other than like castor oil, uh, but in general, just use silicon based lubricants um, super lube is another brand you can use we have molly coat 111 on the website uh, molly coat uh, 33 is actually the best that we've found um, although super lube is is uh, very similar uh, probably roughly equal store your rubber bands in a dark cool location never let them be in a hot car or in direct sunlight and they will last you a long time Okay, so we're going to take our um, stinger and we are going to weigh it. And there we're zeroed out. And we're at 7.3 grams. 
with the you know when the propeller is off of there. So we're above the minimum weight, so we don't need to add any clay. Now with a rubber motor, we're going to want to balance the airplane right about there, if not slightly forward of that. Um, if you need to add up elevator, you can shim under this little wing peg, so you can shift that up. Um, if that makes the airplane dive under power, then you will actually have to go back to the tail and you can cut the horizontal tail loose and glue a shim under here and then re-glue it down. So those are your two options for uh, that side of your flight adjustments. Alright, so that concludes the build for the Stinger for the 2022 Wright Stuff Rules. And we hope you've enjoyed it. There will be a link to a trimming video, so you'll have that information available to you. Um, questions about the build, you can put them in the comments section below or contact me directly. Uh, for any trimming questions, um, contact us through the contact form on our website. See if you can provide a Dropbox link or something of that nature so that I can see a video of whatever trimming problem you're having because that makes it easier to diagnose. And we also have Zoom sessions available uh, for, uh, that's a service that we're now offering as, as a separate fee. Uh, so if you need uh, detailed help, you can get it that way. So hope you've enjoyed the build and we'll see you at contests. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.